always a pleasure going live one-on-one -on -one, uh, with you all. Uh, now, today we are going to be having an interesting conversation. Uh, just in case you were wondering, uh, you can, of course, join, subscribe, follow. All the handles are on your screen right now at TT the Dynamite, hashtag one on one with Titilaya Oyinson, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, before we begin today's conversation, uh, I do share some really interesting stuff with you as much as I can. Now, have you been having challenges uh, generating your own professional ads? Well, look no further than adcreative.ai. Now there is a QR code on your screen right now. If you scan that QR code, it will redirect you to a really interesting website. Now this particular site has been put together to make it really easy for you to generate your own ads. All you have to do is put in all the information you need about uh, what you're trying to sh sell or, or advertise. And hey, artificial intelligence will help generate an advert for you, for your brand. Uh, you can put in the right size, the text you want to put in, the color you want to put in, add an image and click send. Hey presto, you have ads for your brand. So you might want to try it out. Scan the QR code on your screen right now. And uh, hey, uh, just look out this for this more efficient solution. Okay, now on to today's conversation. One-on-one -on -one today is going to be talking about risk. Risk, especially with regards to the hospitality industry. There was uh, an, an article released, uh, well, a press release uh, given on the 13th of February, just about a week and a half ago, uh, by Alliance. Now, they do release risk barometers every year. They've been doing it uh, for 12 years now. And uh, this one really caught my eye says business interruption tops the tourism, hospitality, and leisure industry risks for the year 2023. Wow. Now, that particular industry has, or set of industries, has taken a hit over the past few years, and we thought it was really important to find out more. All right, then. So now we are uh, going live with a very interesting gentleman, someone who has taken time out of his extremely busy schedule to be part of today's conversation. His name is Kevin Barnes. He is the chief financial officer of Allianz in South Africa. Now, he apparently joined the insurer in 2011. Uh, he's a chartered accountant and so much more. Um, but And he's going to give us a little more insight into this issue of business interruption and why it's such a concern. Uh, this year, 2023. Hello. Hi, thank you for having Allianz on your Say it again. I said hi, thank you very much, Allianz, on your show. Oh, okay. You are, you are very welcome. And thank you for taking our time to talk to us today. I do understand how busy you must be, uh, especially since every year for 12 years, Allianz has put out this risk barometer and you are approached by companies all over the world to help them assess their risk. You need to give us a little insight into why this is so important. Certainly. So the basis for, for risk management is effectively trying to come. Uh, risk management is, is forward looking. And what we do with the Alia is we survey a number of industries, a number of respondents across the world. Earlier, this is our 12th edition of the Allianz Risk Barometer. We serve 700 people from 94 different countries. So the benefit of the Allianz Risk Barometer, we have the insights of the people that are at the proverbial coal face. They, know they have also got a band of investigators and from and what Allianz does is with the survey we collect all this information we collect as widely available as possible the benefit benefit being that hopefully there's some and hopefully it's an early warning for people across many industries of what and and that's that's what 
what we hope to provide with the Allianz Risk Barometer. At, a, at some point, um, uh, companies have to address this issue of risk. They have to address uh, those things they, they've been trying to avoid talking about, avoid paying for, uh, uh, paying for safeguards against. And Allianz has uh, painfully but sincerely always brought out different truths every single year. Uh, now, let's talk a little bit about from COVID till now. What have you seen? What are the major changes, especially with regards tourism, hospitality, and all that, that have happened in those particular industries that are interesting? Well, for the Allianz Risk Barometer in, in 2022, um, we've, got a, we've got a bring to the hospitality, leisure, and tourism industry. We've, from the survey, the top five hotspots in the industry, and so, yeah, the first of those is production and supply chain distribution. Um, I think to be able to go, I think you need to understand what business interruption is. And in an insurance context, the business is the profit that will be lost as a result of a loss or a fire or some sort of uh, peril. So from a business interruption point of view, um, for, for this year, the surveys indicate that there are a number of factors driving economic volatility. Um, so that that seems big picture, and it's, and and it's and it's, um, but what this means is that there's going to be a cost of living crisis. Uh, living crisis. The very first thing that people stop spending money on is vacations and holidays. It's going to have a direct impact on on this hospital hospitality, leisure industry. And that's the big call in the industry are, are, trying to, uh, are trying to address. The more big we have found is that within Allianz, the Allianz trade has done a survey session and the impact of solvencies. And, and these are expected to be on the rise. So in the, in the hospitality and tourism industry, there's a, a concern that from a supply chain point of view, there'll be, there'll be an impact. So in other words, if there's a possibility that your food supplier could go due to the recession, go to body that does your laundry, for example, um, whatever, anything like that. So from your resort, these are all concerns that could be impacted by possible insolvencies going forward. So under, under the first point, from the Allianz Risk Barometer is business interruption and, and supply chain disruption. And there's moved up to, to number one. It was number two last year. So it's definitely a forefront of, of people's minds. This is, is natural catastrophes. Uh, this one has moved up from number four to number two. We've seen a, a big change in weather patterns. That is always a concern. Um, and the buzzword in the industry at the moment is weatherproofing your business. Now, this I guess um, you need to weatherproof your buildings. You need to be able to take changes in, in natural catastrophes, windstorms, anything like that. So, so that's the problem with that is it's a more long term. Um, if there's any new developments, you hold up your new developments away from any flood lines, away away from these type of risks. A long-term planning point of view, that's obviously good. But mm -hmm. once you've got bricks and mortar in place, difficult, and then you need to weatherproof it. You've got to take small, 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 make small improvements in the business. So, so that's really so, from a natural catastrophe point of view. Where does uh, the insurance aspect come in here? Now, once you've addressed a risk like a uh, earthquake, uh, natural nat nat natural catastrophes it does seem uh, a little out of this world and you wonder whether insurance companies are actually providing cover uh, and what the criteria would be before a company could qualify for that kind of cover so, any any good insurer um Allianz specifically obviously is intermediate insurance broker um that that intermediates our product 
So I think from a business point of view, point, you'd always use a reputable intermediary or broker that has got advice your industry. That, that needs to be key. You, you can't have a generalist busy trying to specifically in tourism um, industries like, such as that. It's very specific. You spoke about earthquakes earlier. These are all insurable risks, um, but you need to make sure it and to be able to do that, you have to have a good broker to make sure good side and they effectively fight for the insurer. They, they provide the, the correct that the policy wording is such that, like you said, if you have a big hailstorm and an earth, those are perils. These, these losses are called perils. And you need to make sure that these perils are in this policy. Mm. Um, I, I know that, Allianz, after all the research you've done, you probably also have a list of the most weatherproof companies that people can invest in. I'm just thinking like an investor. Maybe we can talk about that. <laughs> but, um, you know, there were quite a few shocks to different industries, especially uh, when it comes to tourism and hospitality. COVID-19 came as a massive shock, generating shortages, delays, higher prices. Uh, and then, of course, the war in Ukraine triggered the energy crisis and that turbocharged inflation. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking about those findings and how almost uh, hopeless or helpless some companies might feel. Uh, what advice uh, do you give, let's say, a, a medium, small to medium uh, size business? Uh, once they've got this information, what do you think the next move should be? Yeah, so I, I think the next move needs to be a, a business continuity plan. Uh, generally, doing the larger corporations, they read something like the Allianz Risk Barometer at, at, at possibilities, they look at scenarios, and then they they make sure that they're ready for most scenarios. Um, the pandemic did catch us by surprise, or the, 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 the why, the, the how how widespread it was um, the most. Pandemic, in, inter, interestingly enough, has always been on, on people's radars, but a total global lock, shutdown, a lockdown, what was, was never in most people's plans. So, so yeah, so from that point of view, you, you did specifically ask about the smaller industry. I think the Allianz Risk Barometer is a good starting point. Uh, tourism is one of the industries we cover but we do we've got a 43 page appendix which covers stick to tourism for now um the, these businesses need to glean as much historical data is important one of the things we have found uh specifically with climate change to have a one in 50 year flood a one in 100 year flood made risk management quite easy we have found this, we have found now that what happened in the past is necessarily an indication of what will happen in the future. So, so this um, risk management a lot more difficult. So, I sound like I'm contradicting myself to a certain extent. Risk that historical data is good, but we need to start sharing information. Tree, um, I, I do think that that kind of information between the industry bodies need to get involved. I do think from, from an industry body point of view, it's important that and start look forward looking for, at a risk point of view to be able to try to point, always has to be historical data. Mm. I, I wanted to touch a little on one that seems like an obvious risk to the average business, uh, the multinational, and that is fire. And it does seem like fire seems to still be quite high up on the list of major risk factors, even with all the fire drills and trainings and, you know, each company has fire captains and, and the like. Why do you think after so long, fire is still on the highest, well, one of the highest on the list for risk? Yeah. So, so this is, this is one of the highest risk in trade and the number of factors that drive that, um, one, from a hospitality point of view, um, locations are very re remote. That's that's the idea. 
you want to be away from hustle and bustle, you don't want cell phone connection, you don't want your boss to call you in remote location. So the risk there is that the response time from is quite is quite a lot. Um, so location specifically in, is a big concern. And so that's the, that's the main reason for, for fire risks. Uh, generally, these locations, specifically in tourism, are very, they've got fat. Trying to be, they're trying to get you out of the cement jungle. They're trying to get you away from your normal dreary life, bricks and mortar. You're trying to get away. You're trying to, it's, it might be wood-based. It might, and so by trying to get you away from your day-to-day -day hustle, it is made a lot more um, a concern that there could be a fire. And I think lastly, what we did find is that leisure and hospitality is just, alcohol is involved. People are moving around. People are celebrating. People are out of rules. You talk about a fire, um, a fire engineer, or and, and all the after couple of glasses of wine, those rules go out the window. And so those are the three main reasons why there's still a big risk in, in, in hospitality. Mm. I was looking at the, the percentages here uh, in the, the press release you, you your team sent out. Um, 500,000 plus insurance industry claims with regards fire over the past year uh, accounts for about 21%. Goodness me, that is quite that is quite large, um, and it does feel like it does feel like we should have got a handle on that by now. It should should be under better control, uh, but let's maybe let's move a little away from that. Um, what about issues? Maybe, sorry, maybe if I can just go ahead. Add one thing to that. What, what we have found with with the development uh, and the pro world is made. There's a lot more synthetic materials. Um, there was a comparison done, um, but they 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 looked at the the rate with which uh, a house burned compared to a flat a current flat, and due to the synthetic materials, a lot of plastic burns a lot quicker currently than than an old house used to be a hundred hundred and fifty years ago. So you said it seems to be getting worse, um, and it and it's a synthetic plastic base. Our hustle bustle of modern day living um, is a lot more combustible and burns a lot quicker. So I wanted to indicate. I, I would have thought it was uh, more about the aging of 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 the assets. Uh, you know, things get older, wear and tear. They're just not. They're just more combustible at that point. I would have just assumed that. Um, for instance, what happened in the UK, where that whole uh, tower just went up. In, in flames uh, it, do, it did feel like the materials used were just too old and they needed to be renewed yeah it, it, it wasn't them being old it underlines my early my early, it was the flammability of, of the product that burnt the side of that apartment building so again it is quick to market the the, the quick plastic molding that those are quite flammable um bigger risk in in modern day living yeah and uh, now conversations happening all over the world have a lot to do with climate change at this point, uh, global warming and the like. Uh, there probably were a few companies that didn't really think global warming would affect them. Uh, but uh, according to your report, it is also quite high up there on the list. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's a climate controversial topic. <laughs> we have even have people saying it doesn't exist. Um, mm. But the concern that we have is obviously the, the direct impact. We, we spoke about all the natural catastrophes we have, we have had of late. And there's definitely an argument that these natural catastrophes as a result of climate change. So we covered that quite extensively in your, in your, in your interview. So what I did want to highlight today is the indirect impact. And um, what we have found is concern about the new low carbon economies. There's a substantial cost that comes with that in managing the transition into this low carbon economy. Companies have obviously had this on a, the radar for a long time, but the smaller companies, the SMEs, been on the radar. It is something that is quite important 
important. It is something that's been dri dri driven global concern that this complex legislation and reporting that comes with me um, isn't getting the focus it needs from the small SMEs. It could be because of it, it could be a cost issue, but we have found that as a as a hospitality tourism, Allianz has found that this this is a risk. Um, is is possible litigation. Um, obviously, bigger tourism end firms behind them, etc. But again, the the entry level SME does not have that concern that there could be penalties for not meeting pre as part of the low carbon economy. So. It is an indirect impact, but we do feel that from then pure, pure natural catastrophes, this is a concern that the smaller in the hospitality industry really needs to consider. Mm. I'm actually uh, very interested in um, the fact that there was a focus on Nigeria also in your report. Um, now, I, of course, I went straight there because that's where we are right now. And I went to the top 10 risks in Nigeria. I, I, I assume you knew I was going to go there. Am I right? <laughs> Where you were based, I would assume you would have drilled down into those. Correct. Yes. So um, I, I did so, sort of a compare and contrast uh, with some of the other uh, top 10 risk countries. You, you did on quite a few. You did on uh, Namibia, Morocco, and, you know, you, did, you went around the world with it. And... Um, I had to look from top 10. Now, climate change, which we just talked about, uh, is uh, number 10 on the list for us uh, in Nigeria. Then business interruption, uh, supply chain disruption. Um, why do you think that is number nine on our list? I would have thought it would be a little bit higher up. Yeah, so I, I, I can't speak for the industry before. The the Alliance Risk Barometer is, is the out put from, from your Nigerian industry. I think they have more more, more pressing matters. Um, it, it could be that for you that the industry is is quite comfortable that from a from a business continuity. Um, the, the thing with the business interruption and what increases the risk is the um, reliance on other providers. Mm -hmm. um, we have found that from Nigeria a lot of your Supply chain is is internal. Um, it's all based in Nigeria. So you're managing that quite well by not relying outside of your country. This is why it is so low on on the Nigerian element of the Alliance diaspora. Uh, I'm going to take it a little, a little further up uh, to number uh, eight: um, blackouts, power disruption, power failure. Uh, aging dams, bridges, and rail tracks. And that's what we have at number eight there. And you say this contributes to about 12% of the risk. Uh, and it's new on the list. I'm a little surprised that it's new <laughs> for Nigeria. Uh, certainly. Um, Allianz obviously has an office in Nigeria, and, and, and we have been, and obviously the, uh, the, the, the power issues in, in the country have been reported on been there um but i do think it has it, it due to the energy crisis um i, I do you think it's for, forefront of people's minds um mm. we, we've had for, for a while now a couple of years um and so that only really crept up on it. and i i do think it is as a result of the focus which has brought blackout to to the forefront even though it is the the pecking order in in nigeria mm. it could be that you guys are just so good at handling it these days yes. mm. uh thankfully yes I, I do feel like people have complained about it for way too long and if you haven't found a solution to your power issues by now it just feels like you're not really interested in doing good business um my opinion <laughs> i could be wrong now number five says uh, theft, fraud, corruption, which is only 17% of the risk, apparently. But um, number six is shortage of skilled workforce. 
now the population of Nigeria is is immense. Uh, the commercial hub, the political hubs, you know, that there is a large workforce. Why would uh, you think this would come up uh, halfway through the risk barometer? So, so, so I think there's, we need to differentiate between warm bodies and having warm bodies that are suitably qualified to, to do what's necessary in the economy. So um, what, what, that, what the other risk barometer doesn't specify whether it is warm bodies that you don't have or the skill. So but as, as you point from a warm bodies point of view, we've across the continent, we have enough people. So it must be the specific skills that are required, uh, which should becoming an issue. So I guess this goes down to, to um, the industry needs to start with programs to bring pick the industry sexy again. Mm. And that's how you draw young people into the economy, into tourism and hospital, and build up that skill in the economy. If you don't make, make it sexy, you're not going to draw in the young, the young you need to try and do across most industries um, is to is to draw them in it's available, the opportunities, mm. um, and and draw the skills into the into the industry. That that's I'm thinking about the the issue of cyber cyber incidents, cyber crime, uh, malware, ransomware, etc., data breaches, uh, fines and penalties. This, I think, what four five years ago, what probably wasn't really high on many lists. When did cyber crime become such a big deal that it would go ahead of uh, power outages and even corruption? Correct. Yeah. So. Pandemic. Um, the Alliance Risk Barometer did find that during the pandemic, the houses, the Internet of Things, pe people were ordering the food online. People, and so with all this purchasing power moving to the Internet, um, the criminal element followed it. Risk Barometer has found that across most industries, this isn't tourism, tourism specific, but most industries, even countrywide, some of these are even top top risk in, in, in some countries. With the increase in the Internet of Things and the online purchasing that pandemic um, drew the, uh, the, um, the criminal element in, into, the, into, into the, the cyber space. Um, there's, there's on the dark web, you can, you can purchase software for $20. Um, we've had these of 12 year old children busy playing with it. They're not going to hack your major corporate their teeth on people's bank accounts, and small SMEs. So what the idea is risk barometer tourism, but in, in cyber as a whole mm. is that the larger corporations, again, they've got the backing the financial backing to be able to put up these big, big protection on the small SMEs again. Either they don't have the knowledge or they don't have the, the, the... and so we find that they are at risk at the moment for this young fifth-year-old who spent $20 on software and he's busy learning how to, how to hack. So mm, mm. That, that Alia's risk barometer has found is SMEs again. That, that seems to be the thread that from, a, from most of these risks, the big corporations have seen them as smaller companies that need to be careful. Mm. Uh, I have to say thank you very much for, for talking to us about this, helping us break it down, because it, it does seem a little alarming uh, when you just see a list of things like it just gets, you know, I, I hate saying bad to worse. Uh, but then you, there are some uh, things on the list that you probably wouldn't have considered until you actually see it. Uh, and the one at number right. one says macroeconomic development, such as inflation, deflation, monetary policies, and austerity programs. So uh, most recently, there was this cash, cashless policy enforcement uh, that came about right here in Nigeria, um, where the population of the country was asked to send in their old notes in order to uh, be given, supposedly be given the new ones um, and be given access to cash should they need it. Um, but 
somewhere along the line that wasn't happening as smoothly as assumed. Then, of course, the fluctuation of the dollar rate in, in Nigeria has always been a factor. But what has Allianz done uh, or, or been doing to help businesses sort of close these shortfalls, ensure that these risks don't cause more damage to their hospitality, leisure and travel companies? Yes. So it depends on which part of Allianz you're talking about. So, uh, within Allianz, we have Allianz that, that you can you can buy protection for your premium debt book. So is that you, if you do have a policy in place and you met the requirements and you've met, if your supplier doesn't pay, a lot of that is insured and you can get paid back for that. So from a point of view and getting money back, um, from 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 your from your your debt is that um, Allianz Partners, which is our travel arm, does does we obviously give give travellers the, the the confidence to travel. Hopefully that's going to open the trip. Allianz is, is very happy to provide travel insurance, and then the company I work for, which is the big corporate, yes, Allianz Global Corporate and Specialty, we obviously provide the insurance cover which is important uh, what Allianz does do is we've got a list of risk engineers what you do is you go we we go on risk and the benefits of that is you get a report which which Allianz gives are what improvements you need to make to make your risk safer and so for a corporate I think that's our most important offering a forward-looking offering would be our services to to help you with your with your risk management, mm. and you've been doing a, a great job so far, especially at least highlighting uh, the risks with this yearly barometer. Uh, what time of the year does it come out uh, each year? Is it towards the beginning of the year or, or somewhere later on? Yeah, so so we start the the exercise in in the last quarter of the year. We try and encourage as many recipients as possible to be part of the Alliance Risk Barometer. The information you have, the more accurate the output is. So that exercise is done, as I say, in the Q1 of the next year is our distribution. So we start the new year with your new risk barometer that gives business the, the good step that they need getting into, into the I have to say a big thank you to you once again, uh, Kevin, for uh, talking to us today. It's the time has flown by quite quite quickly um, with this particular conversation because, but there is so much to talk about on that list. Um, now it does say ten. Uh, there was a top ten highlighted right here in, in the document I saw, but I have to ask, how long does the list go? How many more risks? <laughs> are there because you're just highlighting 10 and it does feel like you probably had to weed it down uh over months of, of work and research how long can this list actually be <laughs> per, per, per industry um mm. we obviously like i say we pride ourselves in being able to give as much and so each industry is different um so i can't give you a number to say tourism is this or must admit but some lists are longer than others. Uh, um, What's, the some, longest? Some What's the longest? Industries are long. oh, What's the longest? I couldn't tell you. I'm afraid I don't have, I don't have those numbers. To okay. Um, All right. Then. All right. I, then. I can definitely get back to you on that. All right, then. Uh, thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, and of course, if you're watching, you can always send in your questions and contributions and uh, put them down there in the comment section or uh, in the chat, uh, however you're watching or listening to us. And we will see what we can do to come back and respond to your questions should you have them. Of course, you can always visit their website. Uh, let's get the website correct. However, uh, the correct website is, Kevin, this is your cue. Now you're putting me on the spot. Oh, um, I, I apologize. I apologize. It should be www.allianz. Yes, uh, Allianz. All right. So, so I have so it. Allianz.com uh, forward slash uh, Allianz Risk Barometer. Or just Google Allianz Risk Barometer and you'll have all the information you need. I believe that's that's better. Yeah, so 
original, Let me just, um, I'll sorry. copy it out. I'll this copy it out on the line. and uh, let it scroll by as we're, as we're wrapping up. All right. Yeah. Let's see if I can do that. It does look like a long one, but if they can see, oh, goodness me, that's the long one. Oh, well, but they get the point. They get the point. That is the PDF. Yeah, <laughs> that's the long link. I apologize. Let me let me take that one off and edit that. Okay. I got it now. All right, then. That's a bit better. At least they get the point. Um, all right, then. Thank you so much, Kevin. He is the CFO, Alliance Global Corporate and Specialty. He's been here talking to us about uh, business interruption, uh, especially with regards uh, tourism, leisure, and travel industry this year uh, on the release of the new risk barometer that comes out every year. This is the 12th edition. Uh, am, am I correct? 12 years now? Uh, you guys... 12 years now. We've been, we've been. Mm. All right, then. Uh, now, I have to say there is still quite a lot to work on, especially in this particular climate, in this particular space. And we'll love to have you back uh, to talk about other industries sometime soon. Perfect. Yeah, we've got we've got 43 pages of appendix in the alias. Lots to talk about. Happy to join you again in the future. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Kevin. All right, so there are probably a few things you probably never thought about, a uh, few aspects of risk that you never really considered. Uh, you've probably been on the delay uh, considering these risks in your annual meetings. Maybe your next quarterly meeting would be a little bit more about uh, how to manage these risks. Now, the Allianz Risk uh, Barometer 2023 findings look at the impact of business interruption and other risk factors on tourism, hospitality, and the leisure industry. And uh, we just had the CFO of Alliance South Africa um, join us today. He's given us some interesting insight into how important it is to assess these risks and um, how to combat the direct impact of issues such as climate change, uh, issues such as possible pandemic outbreaks, issues such as fire, natural catastrophes, and so many other issues in that scope. Uh, if you would like to be on the next uh, edition of One on One with Titila Oingson, you can, of course, send us an email. That's uh, dynamitepodcastnetwork at gmail.com. That's dynamitepodcastnetwork at gmail.com. And we will make that happen. All right, then, until we come your way next time, thanks so much for watching.